Hi guys and welcome to our 521 Sunderland Road to Glory career mode and welcome to the season review. Now, by now you should know how these season reviews go. I absolutely love doing these season reviews. They're probably one of my favourite episodes of the series. I know it's very geeky, but it's just me. I like going through, seeing how much our players have improved, etc. So what we're going to do is, of course, revisit the Premier League table. We'll have a look at other tables as well, different competitions, see who's won what. Have a look at some stats and statistics regarding our own players. Then we'll have a look to see how much of our players have improved from the start to the end of the season. And then we will be heading over to next season to see how much money we have to play with, which... Could be a massive amount, given where we finished in the league and we finished, uh, oh sorry, we uh, won the Europa League as well, of course. It could be a massive amount, and then I will quickly discuss with you what kind of players I'm interested in, what players I want to sell, and then I'll leave it, the, the series, for a good maybe five, six, seven days. So you guys have plenty of time to leave your suggestions, who you want me to buy, what you want me to do and sell and what have you, and then that is how the episode is going to go. Okay, so let's get into it. So, first and foremost, of course, as we know, Manchester City have won the Premier League just one point ahead of their neighbours, Manchester United. They must be gutted there. Liverpool in third. We finished in fourth, miraculously, as well. Chelsea in fifth. Spurs in sixth. Everton seventh. Arsenal eighth. Leicester ninth. Burnley in tenth. Newcastle in eleventh. Aston Villa twelfth. Wolves thirteenth. Southampton fourteenth. Crystal Palace fifteenth. Leeds sixteenth. West Ham 17th and the bottom three, we have Brighton, Watford and West Brom all going down to the championship. And of course to the Community Shield, of course we won that, so I completely forgot about the Community Shield, so we got hands on two pieces of silverware this year, the Community Shield and of course the Europa League as well, so it makes the season feel even better now, I completely forgot about it as we did beat Manchester City by three goals to one. And in the FA Cup, Chelsea did get their hands on some silverware, Brentford. Brilliantly done there from Brentford, uh, getting their way to the final, but losing by three goals to one against Chelsea there. And the Carabao Cup was won by the Mags. To be fair, they did do us a massive favour on the last uh, game of the season by drawing with Chelsea, which of course handed us uh, the place in the top four. So, you know, maybe that's our kind of thank you. Do you know what I mean? Take the Carabao Cup. But they did have to beat Arsenal, so that's a massive, massive win for them. 1-0 to Newcastle to win the uh, Carabao Cup. The International Super Cup, which doesn't really mean anything to us as, as of right now. Barcelona won on penalties against Monaco 4-3 after a one all draw in 90 minutes. The Champions League was won by Juventus. There's no English sides in the final this year. It's Atletico Madrid against Juventus. Juventus won by two goals to nil. And last, but certainly not least, we beat Sevilla by three goals to one in the final of the Europa League. We went a goal down as well, if you haven't seen the last episode. I'm Sure you will have done surely by now, but uh, yeah, we went 1-0 down, it weren't looking great, and then we just turned the engines on, switched it on really quickly, and uh, rolled them over, and what a win it was. But now let's have a look at some of the stats, top goal scorers in the league, and what have you. So, Kane absolutely ran away with it, to be fair, 33 goals for him, but wow, look at that, 4th, 5th, and 6th are all awarded to Sunderland players. I mean, if you look, De Bruyne, 25 goals, that's brilliant. Werner as well for Chelsea, 20 goals, that's great. They, they played every single match in the Premier League. We couldn't physically do that because we rotate, whereas sometimes the AI or the CPU, they use players even when they're exhausted. So I can kind of understand that, whereas we've had to move players around quite a lot. That's why it shows that, you know, like Jones played 29 Premier League games, French played 27, because we would have adjusted and rotated for when the Europa League come around or other competitions. So we rotate, whereas a lot of the time, the AI don't, which uh, is a little bit unrealistic. But either way, look at that. Three of our strikers, all in the uh, top six, in the top goal scorers. 18 goals for Gio Pedro, 18 for Frenchy, and 17 for Jones. That's just... Mad that. Is there anyone else from our squad that managed to squeeze in there? No, they didn't. Although, to be fair, we were the top goal scorers in the league. So, I'll take that every day of the week. But now, onto the assist chart. And as you can see there, Frenchy, what a season he had. Nine for him, along with his 18 goals as well. But it was Deli Alley of Spurs who got the most with 10 assists in total. Carvalho got seven, which I didn't realise he did there. Roberts as well, who didn't play as many games as he probably would have liked was seven. João Pedro, Madweke was seven in the league, although I'm pretty sure Madweke would have got a handful more at least in um, in other competitions. But we've just got quite a few in there. Graven Birch was six. There's several of our lads there all chipping in and that's why all of our goal scorers are our strikers because everyone else around the pitch are chipping in with the assists. Now, clean sheets. Let's have a look where Van der Voort sits. He sits in eighth, which isn't fantastic although we only played 29 games. 
to be fair, because of course, again, we're chopping and changing and rotating. But nine clean sheets out of 29 games isn't terrible. Could be worse. But um, all in all, I don't think he was great for us this season, as I think we should all agree on that one. But now to my favourite part of every season. I know I'm an absolute nerd, but check it to see how much our players have improved throughout the season up until this point. So Van der Voort, he's got up by four, rated 81. Altuve has got up by four as well, now rated 73. George Andrews, who I think I'm probably going to release. I think I've got a youngster in the academy who's actually rated higher than him already. He's rated like 63, 64, so I'll probably just get rid of Andrews. But he has gone up by three, so a fair play to you, Georgie lad. Debra Hume has gone up by four, now rated 81. Constantly breaking the barriers of what was actually set as his potential uh, from EA anyway. 81 rated now, 24 years of age. He's doing absolutely brilliantly. Miranda... His uh, competition at left back gone up by three, now rated 79. Mavropan has gone up by five. He's been absolutely phenomenal this year, now rated 81. Adrobayo, his partner in crime, gone up by four, now rated 80. Nathan Collins gone up by three, now rated 73. Kawasi, the new man who's been absolutely brilliant as well, is really pushing Adrobayo for his place, gone up by three, now rated 78. Pierre Bijo has gone up by one. Now rated 68. See what I did there, by the way. I'm not calling him Bigot anymore because I heard a commentator call another player with a similar name, but he said Joe because he's French. I shouldn't be calling him Bigot. It's Bijo. Either way, yeah. Pierre Bijo. It sounds better than Bigot, doesn't it? <laughs> Pierre Bijo goes up by one. Now rated 68. Willis remains 72 because he did get injured uh, for a large portion of the season. O'Neill goes up by one. Now rated 76. Alvaro Macano goes up by two. Rated 61. Tariq Lampsey goes up by 4, now rated 76. Carvalho goes up by 1, now rated 81. Jude Bellingham goes up by 4, rated 78. Tony Bryce, the big lad in the middle. Well, I say he's big, he's, he's not, he's just a big player for us. 7, he's gone up by, now rated 80. He has potential to be special, he's only 20 years of age, and he runs the show in midfield. Graven Birch gone up by 5. Rated 81, also been so, so solid for us this season. He does everything. He's a big lad, so he wins everything in the air. His tackling ability and bringing the ball forward. He is the perfect box-to-box -box midfielder you could possibly have in this game, in my opinion. Uh, Uri Flores, a player we brought in through the academy, only 17 years of age, an exciting prospect. He goes up by one, rated 66. Charlie Nash, who is going to be joining um, Rapid Vienna uh, next season, and uh, I think we sold him for about 1.3 million, but he has gone up by four. Rated 67. Madweke, look at this lad now. Only 21 years of age. Got up by 5, now rated 84. Some of you lot wanted me to sell him. You know, what were you thinking? Do you know what I mean? He's going to be one of the best right, right, sorry, right wingers in the game. Lyndon Gooch goes up by 1, now rated 76. Diamond, who is still forever on the transfer list and no one's coming in for him. No one's interested. Got up by 1, now rated 61. Patrick Roberts goes up by 3, now rated 80. Nelson has gone up by 4, now rated 80. Isaac French, look at that, gone up by six, now rated 87, only at the age of 19. So he is going to be at least going to be 90 rated come the end of next season or even midway through next season. He's that good. Ricky J. Jones, 20 years of age, also has potential to be special, has gone up by seven, a whopping seven, now rated 79. Angel Pedro has gone up by six, now rated 81. I do have a feeling that even though Angel Pedro has been phenomenal as well, I have a feeling that Ricky J. Jones is actually going to overtake him uh, relatively shortly, or at least at some point. Ellis Sims, who doesn't get that much game time, but has done very well when he has been called upon. A couple of times here and there, he's a bit shaken. You can really tell there's a big drop in quality between Sims and the rest of him. But he's still getting up by five, now rated 77. So that is all of them. <laughs> Okay, so now it is the big moment where we are going to skip forward. I think I've covered every base. Sometimes I forget certain things, but we've covered all the leagues or the competition, should I say. I shouldn't say leagues because we don't really need to check any other leagues for the time being. We've checked all the competitions, gone through the top goal scorers, assists and everything. Checked all of our players to see how much they've improved throughout the season. So that is pretty much the season review done. But we need to head over to next season, see how much money we are going to be given. Hopefully it's a heavy amount. I'm expecting like 70, 80 million. I know it did say... Uh, I think it was last episode that the Premier League awarded us like 160 million, something like that, uh, for finishing in the top four. But you don't usually see all that go straight to the transfer budget, do you? So I'm expecting like 80 odd million, uh, something like that. That'd be very nice indeed. But we shall skip forward and uh, see what next season has to say. The board are very happy with us, by the way. The board are very happy with us. I'm not surprised. 
gone up from the Championship to finish in the top four straight away and win the Europa League. That's uh, I say that's overachieving just a little bit, wouldn't you think? <laughs> okay, so here we are on to the next season. First and foremost, we have to choose what pre-season invite we're going to go with. We always go for the one that just offers the most money. We never play them, of course. We just quick send them all, so we don't really care. Although it is, of course, always a bonus if we get some money. But now, here's a nerve-wracking moment. I'm quite excited, though, because I am expecting a pretty big payout. Pretty big payday in our transfer budget. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? I said about 80 to 90 million, didn't I? I can't really change that now, but I'll go with 80 to 90 million. Let's see what they're going to give us. Let's have a see. Shall we have a see? 138 million. 138 million. Boys and girls, we are rich. <laughs> wow, I never expected that. I never expected that. With 268k in the budget. Right, okay. Before we get carried away, all right, let's have a talk about what I actually want to do this season in terms of uh, transfers. Because I did say I don't want to dismantle the squad too much. Because I don't. There's a couple of bits of dead wood here and there I want to let go. But there's also a couple of places I really need to improve. Or I want to improve. And with that money, we're going to be able to do it. I don't want to make six, seven, eight signings of players that are worth like 15, 20 million. I want to make more along the lines of two, maybe three signings at an absolute push. But big signings. And I mean big signings if we really want to push the squad forward. And what I mean by that is because a lot of these players, they're quite young and they have quite high potential they're going to end up hit, hitting you know, mid-80s anyway, regardless of what we do. So I don't really want to piss our money up the wall just on anything. So the first thing I want to do is I want a new goalkeeper. Uh, so keep that in mind. I want a new goalkeeper, maybe rated 84, 85, on the youngish side, uh, if that is um, possible. Because Vanderbilt, for me, he isn't good enough um, for me, unfortunately. I think if we keep playing him, he will improve. But, um, and he will get better because he has very, very high potential. But he doesn't play in accordance to his rating, if that makes sense. He plays like a very, very average goalkeeper. One game is okay, making the simple saves you expect him to make. But then he'll have a run of two or three games where every shot at the near post just goes straight through him. And it's and it's horrible to watch. And he's worth like 30 odd million. So I reckon we could, yeah, 30.5 million there. We could easily like use him as a player swap for another keeper who is just as good and maybe a bit bigger because Van der Voort's only six foot one. Maybe someone who's like six foot three, six foot four. That'd be all right. So that is the first port of call. Next, that for a big signing anyway, I want a left winger because on one side, if we have a look, I'm just trying to explain my thinking here. On one side, we have Madweke and we also have uh, Patrick Roberts who we play uh, as the right hand side on the right hand side. So Madweke has a first spot on the right hand side with Roberts just behind him, who's rated 80. So we have an 84 rated Madweke and an 80 rated Roberts. So I think that's two really good options for when we rotate. Two very good players, Madweke in particular. But on the left hand side, we do play Nelson, who of course can play on the right hand side as well. But we have Nelson, who's rated 80. Although he did have a really good season last season, he didn't kind of jump the level that Madweke did. So then all we have now on the left-hand side is Nelson and Gooch. And Gooch certainly isn't going to cut it anymore. So I want someone to come in above Nelson and a big player at that. Normal ridiculous like Neymar, but I mean a very, very high rated, like an 85, maybe an 86 rated left midfielder who can go in and then we'll sell Gooch. And that's those are the two main things. Because other than that, I think if we want to get a left winger or left midfield who is of that kind of quality, of that ilk, that's probably going to be our money gone, or almost gone anyway. So those are the two main things to keep in mind. One other thing that I do, or I kind of am thinking about, is the centre-backs. So the centre-backs right now, we have Mavropanos, Adrobayo, Collins and Kwasi. Now, I love Mavropanos, I love Adrobayo, and I love Kwasi. is probably going to end up overtaking Adrobayo shortly. Collins, he's never really made it for us. He's been there for, since very early on. And he's always kind of been in the background. He has been playing for the second string squad. He just hasn't been improving as would have liked. So maybe sell him and then replace him with another young centre-back who's just a little bit better. It doesn't have to be anything drastic, but it's just... So then we, when we do go to our second string, we don't have someone who's so under-leveled or under, as underrated as Collins. Because obviously Kwasi, 78, Adrobayo, 80, Mavropanos, 81. It is miles below them. So we need someone who's a bit more... You know, on the same wavelength. So the main things for me is a goalkeeper, a left winger, and then maybe a centre back who doesn't have to be better. It does not have to be better than these lot. If anything, I prefer them to be a little bit less, maybe like 76, 77 rated centre back. And that's pretty much what I want. Everyone else is going to improve, and that is going to make the squad look so much better. And you'll see that if we do manage to pull this off. 
So if we go through this squad of players I want to sell, Andrews, I'm probably just going to ship out anyway. I might just release him. Um, of course, Van der Voort, he's going to go. He's more than likely going to be using a swap deal. Altuve can stay. Hume and Miranda, of course, they can stay. I love their uh, competition on that side. Two very, very good left backs. Uh, Collins, I want him to go, of course. Bijo, I'm going to put on the uh, loan list. Hopefully, it doesn't glitch out and not let me take him off him. I'll try and take him off it. Oh, yeah, it works, thank God, because usually it glitches. So we'll put him on the loan list for Bijo. Willis, I want to get rid of because he's surplus to requirements now. He's going to go on the transfer list. I'll do the same to Collins now. Oh, Nyan, this is a difficult one because Lampsey, last season, as we, as we did mention beforehand, I told you at the beginning of last season that I was going to start using Lampsey more than Oh Nyan because he was going to end up being better than him, and he already is on the same level as him, 76. And Oh Nyan is now 28 years of age. We could still use him as backup, but maybe if we just found someone who was a bit quicker... Maybe, who was, uh, you know, again, not higher rated than Lamptey. Uh, I don't find that wing backs need to be necessarily higher rated. I just need someone with a slightly better dribbling ability and a bit quicker to maybe compete with Lamptey because 09, it can be the sort of weakness when we are using our second string squad. So maybe put him on the transfer list, but I'm going to leave it for now. Makarno, who could play right back, centre back, left back, which I really like. Um, he's 18, so he's not really going to make it, although it does say he's showing great potential. He is going to go on the loan list. I think that would be the best way to do it. Carvalho, I'm going to sell. I've already mentioned it, but I am going to sell him. He's worth a little bit as well. I think he's worth about 15 million, 16 million there, because in a couple of days, Oxlade Chamberlain will be coming in from the pre contract. We have Bellingham Bryce, of course, they're all staying. Gotham Butch is staying. Flores, I'm going to stick him on the loan list as well. There's quite a few loans to go out. Nash is going to be leaving shortly. But Dweke is staying. Gooch is going to go. Diamond has always been on the transfer list. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he's just, no one wants him, really. And other than that, I'm pretty happy. With the squad, once those players do leave and players go out on loan, it, we might look look a little bit light on numbers, but then money will come in and we will just adjust accordingly. So that is it. You've just sent through there. You can skim through the players to see what you think we should do. And of course, let me know in the comments down below what you think we should do and leave your suggestions um, of what you want me to do as well. But that will be it, guys. If you've enjoyed this season, hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay. Jamming.